Hey guys, welcome to PV Garage. Today we're going to be looking at doing some basic maintenance on our Smart 451 with the Mitsubishi 1 liter engine here. This is the only engine that was available in the 451 in North America. So first off, we're going to do a little spark plug change. So you can see I'm cleaning off the hardware for our coil packs here. Then I'm going to go ahead and unplug the three coil packs. Now obviously I'm doing this work with the engine lowered into the service position. You guys will probably be doing this work with the engine still raised. Um, it is possible to do the spark plug change with the engine up or just dropping it a little bit, but it's obviously not as easy to get at as it is in my case here, but I had the engine down for other maintenance, so that made my life real easy. So I'm just pulling out the coil packs here, um, getting all three out, and then I'll be able to clean the holes there just to make sure I don't get any debris down into the cylinders after I remove the spark plugs. And I'm going to go ahead and remove all three spark plugs. Now you can see here, they weren't in too bad shape, but the gaps had gotten quite big from use. I'm reinstalling some NGK plugs in mine. They've always been a favorite brand of mine, so I use them in all my vehicles. We've got a couple of part numbers here up on the screen so you guys can see in order uh, some decent spark plugs to replace yours. I'm just snugging them all down and then I'm going to reinstall my coil packs. I had applied a little bit of dielectric grease to the threads of the spark plugs there just to be sure and a little bit of grease on my hardware to hold the coil packs down as well. You can see I've plugged them all back in so they're all ready to go and I'm just going to snug that hardware down. Next up, we're gonna have a look at replacing the air filter. So here, you can see the top of the motor. This is accessible through the uh, maintenance cover in the back there, and I'm just gonna remove the filter element by taking off that hose clamp on the that attaches to the lid, and I'm replacing it. I've got a couple part numbers here. I like the Mann filters myself. Mann and Hanks, very good brands. Obviously, you can use whatever you like. And then we're just replacing cover and doing those hose clamps back up. Very easy to do this service. And I recommend doing this more often, um, probably every few oil changes. It's cheap insurance and it's easy to do. So a couple of spring clips as well, um, just reattaching those uh, that I had removed when I was removing that cover. There's the two spring clips at the back and then a couple of tabs at the front that you just go down onto. Now the next thing we're gonna do is give our car an oil change. So you can see here I'm under the car, oil filter clearly visible and you can see where the drain plug is as well. Now drain plug can be jammed on there pretty tight. So just be careful when you're removing it. You'll pull that drain plug out. The oil in this car was particularly nasty. So I was glad to be changing that. Once all your oil's out, from the drain pan, you can go ahead and pull your oil filter. Just make sure the pan is under the filter when you remove it. My filter was on there pretty tight, so I actually had to use um, my little wrench here to get the oil filter started. And again, we'll make sure that's ending up in the pan. Now after cleaning our surface, our mating surface, to make sure that there's no dirt and debris that's going to end up in the engine oil, we can lubricate the o-ring on our new filter and install the new filter onto the post. I like to fill the oil filter with a bit of oil before installing it, just prevents the car from starting dry when you go to uh, fire it up again and then set your oil level. We're going to reinstall our drain plug and make sure that it's snug. Now it is easy to strip the threads out of this oil pan. It's an aluminum oil pan, so it's a little bit sensitive to being over torqued. I've also seen them crack. If you're not sure, go watch my video on oil pan replacement. You'll see exactly what I mean. And so we're just going to snug it up. It doesn't need to be crazy tight, just snug. Make sure that the oil plug's not gonna come out, but it doesn't need to be over tightened. Now we're gonna fill with our favorite oil here. I'm using a 0W40 European blend. I really like this oil, not specifically this brand, but just anything that has the Volkswagen 505.00 and the Mercedes-Benz 229.3, I believe it is, certifications. 
But if you're not sure, please get on the internet, go to your Facebook group and ask what oil you should be putting in your car. That would make me really happy. And we're just gonna check our level and keep adding oil. I like to set it to the max mark and then I'll start the car, run it for a little bit to make sure there's oil into all the parts, recheck the level and bring it back up to about three quarters full uh, or three quarters of the max. Now the last service we're gonna do here, and this is just something that I like to do when I get a car um, that I don't know the history of, but it's not something that I'll do regularly. I'll typically just do it once when I get the car and then that'll be it for the life of the car with me anyways. And uh, this is to change the transmission oil. So you can see we're under the car here. I'm gonna pull the drain plug out of the transmission. The oil that came out of this one was in quite good shape. And then we're going to reinstall our drain plug once all the oil's out, just snug that up. And then we're going to swing around to the other side of the transmission and pull the fill plug out from the other side. So now we're gonna use a 7590 gear oil. Uh, there is a Mercedes spec on it, but uh, I think any decent quality 7590 gear oil will do the job. I know I'm not too picky. So we've got our drain plug out here and I'm just going to feed a hose in which is connected to my bottle of gear oil here. And I think it takes about two and a half liters of oil, maybe a little bit less than that. And we're just going to fill it until the oil starts to spill back out that fill hole. You've got to make sure that the car is relatively level when you do this so that you get the level set correctly. And then we're just going to snug our fill plug back up and we're done with this part of the job. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little bit of maintenance on your 451. I've found that just doing these few steps really changes how the car works, makes it drive like brand new most of the time. There's obviously a lot of other repair work that I had to do to my Brabus that you see in the video here. But uh, for general stuff, if you're just purchasing a car and you don't have the maintenance history on it, this is the basic maintenance that you wanna do as soon as you get, a, get the car and it'll set you on the right path to um, having, you know, lots of fun with your smart. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Any interaction from you guys is great. Um, and we'll catch you next video. Have a good one.